Hola, mi clase. Today we are doing 6.2, describing functions. So remember, functions are going to be um, one x for every y, right? No repeating x's. So mainly we're going to have linear equations, right? We've done this. Y equals mx plus b. The graph of the relationship is a line, right? The graph of the, sorry about that. Let me fix that is a line and then linear functions which is also something we've used is a graph that is a non-vertical line and has one value of y for every value of x right one output for each input all right so here's our first example we're going to graph this linear function so the temperature at dawn is eight degrees fahrenheit and increases steadily two degrees every hour. The equation y equals 2x plus 8 gives the temperature y after x hours state whether the relationship between the time and the temperature is proportional or non-proportional. Then graph the function. So this is nothing new. We've decided if things are proportional or non-proportional. We have made tables. We have graphed like nothing new here, right? So our equation is given to us. Really nice, right? So remember, m is always right here next to x so our slope is 2 we can also write it as 2 over 1 right if we need to graph it and then don't forget we can go the opposites negative 2 over negative 1 right a negative over a negative is still a positive and 2 over 1 reduces to 2 so nothing about these are different 2 equals 2 over 1 which also equals negative 2 over negative 1 and then our y-intercept is 8 i like to write it as a point 0 comma Eight. All right, so we're going to fill in this table. We don't even have to fill in very many. We got x, fill it in. I don't know what this extra one is for. Y, and then we're going to put them together as a point. All right, so let's just use, let's use, oh, what is my graph going by? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so let's use negative 2, um, 0, and randomly let's use 4. Why not? So is that what it's going to look like? We're going to go 2 times negative 2 plus Eight. That's how we fill in the table. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. Like I said, I'm not sure what this column is for. And then we take our x and our y and we make them a point. My pen is being laggy. Negative 2, 4. All right, let's do 0. So 2 comma, or parentheses, 0 plus 8. Well, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 8 would get us 8, and there's our y-intercept, 0, 8, where x is 0. All right, 2 times 4 plus 8. Notice I'm always keeping the 2 first. That's because it's 2 is first in my equation. I'm putting my x, I'm inputting, right, input my x. Inside my parentheses, I always add 8, and then this is our output, right? We did the math, we got the output. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 8 would get us 16, so we would have 4, 16. All right, let's see how many of these we can graph. So this is 2 and then positive 4, so 2, 4. Remember, these go by 2s. And then we have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And then if we go out here to 4, unfortunately, we can't fit 16. So what I'd like us to do is go use our slope, which is 2 over 1. So we would go up 2, but we need to be really careful and only go up over one, which would be right here. Same here. We go down two over one. We can even do down four, two, four, over two. There it is. All right, make that triangle a little bit bigger. And then I would make sure I connect them I'm trying to make mine a little thinner so I don't copy these or drag over these. There we go. And then the last thing says is this proportional or non-proportional. So remember proportional relationships are straight, but they go through the origin. This does not go through the origin. So we would say this is non-proportional. It is linear. It is a function, right? But it is not proportional. All right, a square tile has a side length of x inches. 
the equation y equals x squared gives the area of the tile in square inches, right? To area, find the area of a square, it's the side times the side. So that's where we get x squared. Determine whether the relationship between x and y is linear, and if so, is it proportional? So first we're going to determine if it's linear, and then we're going to decide if it's proportional. So let's use negative 2, we'll use 0 again, and then let's use just 2 this time. Maybe it'll actually fit on our graph. So we're going to go parentheses, negative 2, input, and then I'm going to square it. So remember, squaring is negative 2 times negative 2. That's squaring. This is negative 2 squared. What's a negative times a negative? A positive. 2 times 2 is 4. So we're going to have the point negative 2, 4. So then we'll put it in 0. Oops. Right, that's 0 times 0. And we'll get the point 0, 0. So then we're going to plug in 2. Right, 2 times 2 is the same as 2 squared. And 2 times 2 is 4. So we get 2. Oh, not 2, 0, 2, 4. All right, step two says we're going to graph these ordered pairs. So negative 2, 2, 4, 0, 0, and 2, 4. Now, I know a majority of you are going to connect this more like a V, but I am going to tell you that this shape actually makes more of a U. And it kind of goes like this. So try to make that a U shape. So it says identify the shape of the graph. We would say this is nonlinear. They're nonlinear, right? This did not make a straight line. Okay, and then it says describe the relationship between x and y. So the relationship between x and y is that it's they're nonlinear, which automatically makes it non-proportional, right? But it is a function because if you notice, my x's don't repeat. And they're not. It's going to go way out like this, and it's going to keep going out like this. It's just going to go real steep real fast. The y's are going to be repeating, but remember, I don't care if the y's repeat. So this is nonlinear, it's nonproportional, but it is, in fact, a function. Okay, so that's how we would describe these relationships between them, right? It's just kind of describe the graph, describe what's happening, and so on. All right, so here's your additional practice. It says, so state whether the relationship between x and y and y equals um, a half x is proportional or unproportional, then graph the function. So I'm going to put some points in for you. Um, let's use 4 or negative 4, 0, 4. And then I want you to plug them in. And I would like you to see if you can get the y's. So this would be a great time to pause and see if you can get the y's, and then if you got them right or whatnot, and then we'll practice graphing them together as well, okay? All right, so hopefully you paused, right? That prompt is for you to pause, so negative four times a positive, negative times a positive is a negative. Half of four is two, okay? And if you're not sure, right, if we go like this, that gets me 20. And that's 0 plus 2 is 2. And then I move the decimal over 1. So you can see it is, in fact, 2. And it's negative because they're opposite signs. So we get negative 4, negative 2. So this one you should have gotten 0. So 0, 0. And this one you should have gotten positive 2. So 4, 2. All right, pause. Try to uh, graph these points as well now. See if you can graph them. So we should have a point at 0, 0, negative 4, negative 2, and uh, 2, no, 4, 2. There we go. You can also see my slope does, in fact, work. This is a half, right? A half is the same as this. So we went up 1 over 2. I knew they go by 2s, but it's 2 over 4, and 2 over 4 is still a half, right? That's the same as 1 over 2. This is the same as 2 over 4. So it does work. 
okay? I can then use my slope and do it again, two over four, and so you can continue this pattern, which is really nice, from our last section. All right, so then what I'd like you to do is answer this question, okay? Is it proportional or non-proportional? Um, and then, you know what, I'm gonna leave it. I want you to put your answer right here and I'm gonna see if you, what answer you got, okay? I'm gonna check that when we get back to class. All right, so things to remember. Um, I mean, mainly just that, you know, functions, X's don't repeat. Can't spell repeat, apparently. Just wanna keep making sure we remember that. Our X's don't repeat. All right, here's your independent practice. They filled in part of the table. You need to fill in the rest. You need to determine its relationship. And then you need to graph this. This is very similar to what we did in 4.1. So if you need remembering how to do this part like this, uh, go look at 4.1. You could also remember use your slope. There's lots of things you could do. Okay, until next time, adios.